Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rich. Good morning. It is Monday, April, April 16th. Okay, let's do this. I needed to finish up this Hulk piece. So what we got going on is, I think the rain, you saw that, sorry. I'm, um, so what I found this morning, I hadn't worked on this paper in uh, about a month or so. I got real busy with deadlines and I, I couldn't work on the piece. So I went in and did some more speed lines with the Hunt 102. The paper is garbage. Um, David drew this in 2007 on Marvel paper. Could have been at a show, I don't know. If this is got a rough tooth on it, so it's not smooth board by any means. It's definitely a rough board, but it might be a smooth rough. I have no idea. Anyway, though, but yeah, the speed lines were bleeding. So what I ended up doing is I used um, a rapidograph, and do you see those dotted lines? It actually created a pretty cool effect, so I kind of worked with it and um, was able to get a little bit of a splintery sort of um, line with my rapidograph to just fill in some of the lines. But yeah, the 102 was just weeping and tearing and um, it really was not gonna look good if I went through the whole piece and did it. So because this is an extra that we're putting on to the commission anyway, um, I'm not gonna go overly crazy with the rain at the risk of destroying the paper so bad that it looks bad, you know? This will be one of those things where if you were doing a pro job, you would sort of address it then. Okay, so the white that I'm using, I actually have put it into a little, like, medicine cup type thing. But, uh, great, I just spilled it on my finger because I was going to tell you about this this stuff. So, I had suggested this white paint um, in a video a while ago, and this is what it is. It's the Holbein Super Opaque White. It's an acrylic airbrush paint. Flow is really good. So, what do I find out? It's extremely toxic. It's weird because I, I didn't know that acrylic paints could be toxic. But anyway, I was ordering it off of Blick, I believe, and uh, there was an exclamation point next to it. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. What does the exclamation point mean? It's so awesome. They're like telling you of all these paints, this one's killer, dude. Exclamation point. But no, it meant it's, it's poisonous. So hold on, I'm going to pause it because I got it all over my finger. I'm going to go wash my hand real quick. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so anyway, but I'm actually going to co contact the company and find out exactly what um, what the warning label is for exactly because I have really, really sensitive skin and I have really sensitive respiratory sort of function and uh, the last thing I need to be doing is messing around with some sort of toxic uh, uh, medium. So I'd rather use something else and just work it out. I used to use Pro White, so I could go back to that. It's a little thick, but you can you can thin it down. So anyway, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going through the lightning that the raindrops um, uh, cut through, and uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, have the lightning pop. So hopefully you can see this. Um, but yeah, so it had been a while since I worked on this piece, but I was feeling, I was starting to stack way too many things on top of each other. I'm inking two books for DC right now. Um, I've got a book that I'm doing for another another company that's four more issues. I have the book that I'm writing and drawing on YouTube. I had a black drawing I needed to finish, which I finished over the weekend. So that's done. Um, and then I had this commission. I have free comic day coming up. I need to get prepared for that. And I was just... It was looking like there were seven things in Comic-Con, which is coming up uh, in a couple months, but it's still something that I actually prep for kind of early because, you know, you want to make sure that you have all your stuff going on. Um, so anyway, um, you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know what? I need, I need to get on this. I need to get a couple of these things off of the to-do list. And so also for YouTube, I thought it would be nice to just have one, a little tiny bit of variety and two finish this up so there's not like a bunch of loose um, things hanging you know like video series that are like incomplete it's no good I used to watch video game walkthroughs why well, I still do uh, and uh, yeah, there's nothing worse than when someone starts a game and then hops off to play like the new hot game and you're like dude you never finished the one come on so their game is alright I was into that other thing so anyway um, 
this is laying down nice. Like I'm, I, it's going down good. And again, my, my hope is that maybe this is just a lead based paint and you just have to handle it with care. Um, but, uh, it's hard, hard to say. So hopefully they'll be, um, honest with me. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of friends with the, the uh, guy, the owner of the company. So I think if I call him directly and just be like, Hey man, what's the deal with it? Cause I don't want to get sick. And also, it's just good to know so that you handle it properly. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, you're not sticking your brush in your mouth or doing anything that, um, um, you know, you shouldn't be with it. And it's just one of those things. But yeah, that was a little interesting to find that out. But uh, let's see what else. Yeah, so Saturday and Sunday, I worked on a black drawing. I put in, I don't know how many hours, probably like 16 hours and finished it up. It's nice. It'll. I think over the summer I'll be able to show it. I think he's going to try to have something together for Comic Con, so I'll I'll pop that out then. But uh, it's his piece. He paid for it. It's you know I want to be respectful for his his uh, project and reveal. So it's no big deal. But yeah, so it's exciting. Like I'll I'll actually have all my free time as soon as I finish this piece will be my free time. And that's good, because it was like, man, I was starting to be like, dude, you have a lot to do and get some of this done. So I had a job offer in the middle of last week. I can say what it is, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to be doing Batman Deathstroke with Ed Bennis. So that'll be really cool. When they say Batman, I'm down. Deathstroke's a little bit of a pain in the butt to ink, quite honestly. His little chainmail armor. It can get a little nutso, but uh, it'll be cool. It's it's just one issue, and uh, Ed Bennis and I had wanted to work together some more, so when the opportunity came, I definitely wanted to take it. I think we could definitely do something pretty cool together, so... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's funny, like, like even when I don't want to take extra work... When they when they say Batman, it's hard to say no. It really is. They could just lie to me and tell me Batman's gonna be in it, <laughs> and I'd probably bite at it. I'm like really, he'll he'll be in the book later, Rich. Don't worry about it. Just think these pages. He's coming. Just hang tight, hang tight, little buddy. Okay, so I got all that going through. This may not be the most exciting thing to watch, and hopefully I wasn't completely out of the screen when I did that last part, but... Um, yeah, for... You can... There's two ways when you do the speed lines. You can try to ink around this stuff. What I find when you do that, though, is that the lines don't look as consistent, because you're trying to match stuff up then. Uh, through you know past the thing so there's definitely times when it's just better to draw through and you kind of notice that I'm working from top down I do that just so that I don't run my hand through um, wet ink it's actually a lot more of this to do than I thought I actually was online this morning looking at um, Hunt 102 nibs because I'm starting to get low. And unfortunately, the 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 biggest source that I have of them, like I have a box that's like stuffed with them, they're, they're all bad nibs. I remember the era. It was actually, and it's interesting, I'll tell you guys the story. I've said it before, but so... Uh, uh, Years ago, I can't remember what year it would have been, but anyway, there was there was a, a like say like a year where the Hunt One or Two Crocos were really really bad, and um, you know it was very frustrating. Everybody was kind of complaining about it. Even people from other companies that I didn't even know um, were kind of like, "Man, the nibs suck. Like, what what's up? This is you know, they don't make good nibs anymore." And one day when I was working, it occurred to me that. The nibs sucked. That was that was for sure. It was frustrating, but they were really consistent with their suckiness. And I thought, I wonder if the machine is messed up. Maybe the machine that's cutting them 
is like set wrong or is dull and so I called the Qbert school which was who Wildstorm ordered their supplies from and I talked to I think her name was Katie Qbert which is kind of weird because I have an editor named Katie Qbert and I don't think it's the same person the one at the Qbert school is actually I think one of the Qbert boys wives um, and uh, I said hey I go can you contact like the hunt company and ask them about what my little theory is and she was like, yeah, you know, I could do that. And so she did. And sure enough, the machine had a parameter that it would be set to, to cut nibs. And this been, this was going on for a long time, at least a year, if not longer. And say on a scale from one to 10, like, you know, eight and nine was where it should have been set for high quality nibs. And so they were cutting them at like three and no one had noticed and no one had ever said anything about it. And so... They adjusted it, sent me the new nibs, and bam, they were killer. So, if nibs are good, even to this day, I take full credit for it. Because it, it, it's, it's something that people don't know. <laughs> it, that's a true story. And they did actually fix the nibs, and they were fantastic after that. Um, so, hold on, I'm seeing a little bit of a race. I want to race over here. But yeah, that was really, really cool. It was very exciting and kind of... Um, like it was just really pretty cool to have 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 that work you know that they actually like said yeah you know what the machine was off and fix it and then the nibs were great but unfortunately the ones that i have at my house are like you know it's probably three or four boxes of the the, the bad dull ones um all together so i needed to order new nibs so i'm i'm looking around they're very expensive though now i mean um, the two packs are actually more affordable. I couldn't even really hardly find the blue boxes, which was kind of weird. I was looking around and like that was it was like twelve nibs in a blue box thing, and uh, yeah, you know, no luck. So, or, I mean, I I've, I found I found like one or two, but not, you know, I used to buy them in gross. Like if I if I buy nibs, I'll buy like twelve or twenty boxes of them. So that's you know. 20 boxes would be 240 pen tips. And I actually, what's funny is, uh, I don't really go through them very fast. A pen nib can last me a long time. I'm pretty I'm pretty delicate on them. And uh, so I know I was, I had mentioned to Norm Ratman, he was saying that he goes through like a couple a day. And I was saying that, I mean, I can sometimes do full books and not even switch out a pen nib. It sounds crazy, but again, it's it's just how hard are you grinding them, I think. I don't know. But anyway, when people ask, I mean, I think it's like sort of a your mileage may vary sort of scenario. It just depends on what you're doing with it. I, I also, um, what wears them out is splitting the fork. Like the, the pen nib is like two prongs that um, spread apart and that's what creates the line. And it's like, if, if you, once you've, stretched it a certain distance it's not going to go back and get the sharper line so you kind of have to be mindful of that hopefully you all checked out the um super fun sunday yesterday we did a frisato book it definitely was not the one that i was thinking of um in the beginning i was saying that that was my favorite book and that absolutely was not the one that that i was thinking of because i know that the one that was my favorite had the sketchbook in the back so it's either issued two or three of those that has the sketchbook in the back and then at the end of the video it kind of was confusing because i showed a hardcover sketchbook but that wasn't what i was referring to that's actually a completely different thing um, the sketchbook was like a, a bonus in the back of one of the graphic novels and was, was different, was color design sketches and stuff like that. And then um, um, the sketchbook sketchbook was like his pencils. But I will say this, though, is I peeked a few pages past what we had looked at. And, oh, my God, the stuff was so good. So I'm definitely coming back to that book because um, what I showed was nowhere near what he was... Uh, what was coming in that book it was pretty incredible and very very cool so okay so we've got all the lightning um outlined and if after the video i may catch like a something that i missed or whatever but it's not a big deal most of it's done right now so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna do like a basic pass on this and then kind of wrap it up for the video and then um i'm just gonna hit this with the micron because like i said the paper's mushy so i don't want to 
I don't want to tear anything. Um, okay, I'm going to let that dry for a second. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll do a pass on it, and then I'll, I'll actually finish it um, probably uh, just on my own com completely. But we'll get really close to the end of it. All right, so now I'm going to use a Hunt 102. Speaking of Hunt 102s, I'm going to clean it in water really fast just to get it kind of damp. And I'm going to go in with my poisonous white ink and uh, draw. <laughs> Don't do the crown if you can't do the time. All right, what are we doing? Okay, I need to. There's something I just saw that I wanted to do. What was it? Oh, it's. I keep seeing little areas where his pencil erase or his pencil lead hasn't been completely erased. David draws pretty dark. So okay, so this is a hunt one or two. That ink. I'm just gonna kind of go over these little white lines that I had put in here before and chip up the rocks a little bit. It was actually a really weird coincidence too. The the guy that was getting this commission from me emailed me yesterday and I was like, dude, that's like such weird timing because I'm finishing your piece tomorrow. So it worked out good. I mean, not that I couldn't have emailed him on my own, but it was funny that just out of the blue he emailed me because he doesn't really, like, nag me about the piece or, you know, like, you know, contact and be like, hey, what's up? When's it going to be done? He knew I was busy. I mean, I actually kind of try to, like, almost, like, discourage people from getting commissions from me because I, I am so busy and it, just, it can be tough trying to uh, squeeze in more work when you work all the time. It's always weird having the camera like right above my eyes when I'm doing this too. So like I said, I guarantee that I'll see stuff after the fact that I'll go and do. But I normally will throw the page four or five feet away from me and then look at it that way as opposed to... Uh, I like the further away read more than a cl close read. It's just... Uh, I can't wait to get back to my comic book thing that I was working on, but just I had responsibilities that I needed to get done. It's too much work, yo. Okay, I think the only other thing I wanted to do is this up here. So like I said, I'm not neglecting the inking videos, but I mean, once I start penciling the, the pages and stuff from my story, um, I'll be inking those. And so you'll get some really, really good inks because I'm, I'm really going to push myself on that project quite hard. And, um, uh, you know, I want to just come up with something pretty killer. So, all right. I am going to do a tiny bit of splatter, which is kind of weird because, like I said, I don't want to handle this white ink, and I used to do it with my fingers. Like, I would uh, take a toothbrush and then flick it with my thumb, but I'm kind of like, eh. So I'm just going to put a light mist of it with this thing, and then I'm going to go wash my hands. Like I said, I don't want this stuff sitting on me. should get, like, a little glove or something. All right, so I'm going to just sort of shove this under here. And then there's there is multiple ways to splatter. I don't always use a toothbrush, but I'm just going to do a light mist down here, so... You may want to um, 
try it on different um, like a different surface really fast first just to get um, sorry I hope my arm is in the way just I'm hitting it with a very very light mist kind of across the bottom here just to give it a little a little fuzz Top planes probably would get more, so you can kind of play that up a bit. And there would probably be some reflective there. So it might be a little bit hard to see. Just give me a sec, and I'll, I'll pull out. I'm gonna get his body a little bit. I still have to do some raindrops on him, but... I do a tap technique also, I'll show it in a second. Just, I'm just trying to get white everywhere. I'm, this is why I keep my Cintiq covered up because it's on my drafting table and um, Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Let me pause this for a second. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, the other thing too is you have to wash your toothbrush out when you use that white ink because it um it will dry pretty hard and crunchy on your stuff. So you want to be careful with that. And then the other technique that I use is I take a brush, put it in the white ink. And I'm tapping it right now above a piece of paper just to get it going. Um, but I'll actually I tap tap whites in. I see like Jim uses like a, he'll use like a card, like a Starbucks card or credit, old credit card or business card. Um, but uh, you can also just use your brush and tap, tapity tap. And I'm controlling it. It's not like random. I mean, there's a randomness to it, but I actually, I've done this enough. I can actually even get lines to twist or like get the patterns to, to twist based on how I, um, I, I sort of like turn it and tap it. So yeah, I can almost, I can do some weird stuff, but you're just gonna have to practice that. I don't know if I can really show a video of, of uh, I don't know if I would be able to explain it, but it's just looking really cool. I don't know how, how it reads, but it actually looks pretty nice. This really just amps up the detail where it just, it really looks like he's out in the weather. Okay, so lots of pretty detail. And like I said, I will go through this after I see the video and uh, probably add a little bit more detail, but, but uh, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Yes, turned out nice. It looks good. I need to just, I need to do these raindrops, like have them uh, break the plane of his shoulders and stuff like that, but I need to let this dry for a few minutes So I'll do that later, but I'll post if you go to my patreon I'll put it I'll post a scan of this because I'm gonna scan it before I send it out So I'll have a link in the description box below for my patreon You can check it out for free there and uh, if you want to tip a dollar while you're there do it, baby Patreon's been crushing it Pat brought it big time over the weekend Thank you so much Pat and if you're watching this good luck with your copier Pat's looking for a home copier. By the way, like if anyone has a suggestion for printing blue lines at home, put a little more white right here. Um, let me know because uh, he was asking about that. I know Jonathan Glapping at one point had mentioned the printer that he was using for blue lines at home, but it was like a year or two ago and I can't remember what he said, but an affordable printer that can print out full size 11 by 17 blue lines. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. And uh, okay, so like I said, last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and do these raindrops that are that are breaking his planes and do that. And I may flick a couple with white, but again, you can see the final scan over on my Patreon. I'll post it up there. And uh, there we go. This thing is pretty much done. It was fun. That was a fun piece. Like I said, I would have put more rain in, but the paper just wasn't going to let me. And I'm not going to ruin the piece. Um, trying to like just amp it up, you know. Sometimes you have to just be 
a little conservative on stuff just so you don't make a huge mistake on someone's piece. Okay, all right, thanks. Smash the like. I will be back. And please share my videos if you haven't. It all helps the channel, yo. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Hulk says goodbye. Here, we'll, I'll pull it out of the thing. And who knows, I may even mess around with the rain some more after the video is done. We'll see. Some blank spots I want to kind of goof with maybe. All right, bye.